Hello Internet! Today I have this mysterious GeForce RTX uh, from GeForce RTX. I don't know. Must be some kind of a cheap brand that is so cheap they are ashamed to print their own brand name on their product. It is reported to crash while loading drivers, so let's plug it in, power it up, and see if it crashes. Right away, I noticed the red X of death, but we do get a picture for some reasons. And as the drivers attempt to install, screen turns black, I get scared and terrified. Okay, so what do we do when we get a problem like this? I don't know. And neither do I. And probably some of you too. So I'll start narrowing things down one by one, starting with a keyboard, and uh, which does react to pressing caps lock, which means the Windows isn't frozen. But that doesn't really tell me anything other than the Windows isn't frozen, so I'll take the card apart and see what we find. As I was opening the card, I noticed these burn marks. Not sure what's going on. This already looks suspicious and interesting, so let's continue. As I was removing the screws, I noticed these four screws here were screwed under instead of on top of the cover. I don't know if this unlocks FPS boost or drops temperatures by 20% or not. I'm sure we'll find out soon enough, so let's keep digging. Once inside, Chinese thermal pads and excessive amount of paste suggest that someone had tried to fix this with Chinese pads and excessive amount of paste. But I guess it didn't work. Anyway, once I got it all clean, I noticed a couple of things. Original memory is completely replaced, and a whole bunch of components got stolen or simply blown away because they are unnecessary. You know, according to the person who worked on it before. Continuing our diagnostic, let's verify that all power stages are active by using an oscilloscope to monitor signals generated by each driver MOSFET. As you can see, all phases are active and looking great, which means the problem may not be power delivery. Next test in line is a memory test, which as you can see, passes with flying colors. You know, the green colors. Even in the MT did not report anything, yet for some reason we still crash. In a situation like that, I think what we need to do is to reboil the core, so let's reboil the core and see if that helps.
Core is Revolt, Card is Cooled, Resistance is checked, so let's plug this thing in and see if it works. Looks like a progress, we got a picture, but as soon as the drivers kick in, it's dead. Well, that was a waste of time. Next, let's try to identify missing components around the memory chips. Maybe they serve an important purpose. I mean, you would think they'd have to be for a reason. As I was looking around, the key components that were missing happened to be resistors. It looks like all of those resistors are temperature sensing resistors, which makes me think that the cart is going into a fake thermal shutdown. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't know exactly how this thermal shutdown circuit works, so what I'll do is I'll just solder all the resistors back where they belong and see if that helps. In a moment of truth, bam! Hmm, maybe missing half the components doesn't affect the GPU functionality after all. And then I thought, let's reboil the memory. Maybe it wasn't done right. After what we've seen so far, this is actually a very reasonable assumption, so let's do that and see if that helps. memory is reballed. The card is now very crispy as you can hear. That's to be expected by the way. So let's plug it in and see if it works. No crashes yet. Maybe because drivers failed to install due to error 43 in the device manager. So let's run the memory test again and see if any of the chips are dead. Memory test is running and we have a problem. The chip may have been on its last legs and Reball finished it off, which is good. At least we know where the problem is. So I'll go ahead and replace this chip real quick and see if that helps. By that time, my hope for a successful fix was already dead. But I gotta push on forward no matter what, so here we go. Nope. Not the day. I ran a memory test again. Everything looked clean, so what else could be wrong? What else could a mystery repairman do to screw it up so bad? 
After looking around and measuring all of the resistors around the memory chips, I noticed that some of them were soldered in the wrong place. More problems to fix, I guess. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. After that, with no hope left, I ran in again and the driver's loaded. And I couldn't believe my own eyes. Out of the valley to make sure it runs for a couple of seconds and it froze okay so I started checking every resistor one by one again and what I found was actually very surprising that is some of the resistors while having the correct value do not contact the pad underneath them Once that was done, the moment of truth, the valley now does not run at all, and we get a black screen again. Not the day! And then I did the unthinkable. Little trick I learned in World War II is to disable NVIDIA sound drivers and see if that helps. With the sound drivers disabled, the valley no longer crashes, and even firmware worked. So at this point I wonder, why? Was all that work for nothing and all I had to do was to disable a sound driver? For the last part of this repair, yes. With that done, I can now go ahead and place a few filtering caps that were missing. These caps are all over the board and they are connected in parallel around every memory chip. Many of them are redundant, uh, but I will put in a few in places where they make most sense and run the test as usual to make sure everything works as expected. At this point, card is assembled and running stress test, which as you can see, performing as you would expect. And with that done, I thank you for watching. And if you need a repair, please contact me by following the link in the about section of this channel. Leave a comment below and subscribe for more. Goodbye.